uh, warmly received by the Guinean Prime Minister. Um, we met um, with key line ministries, um, the Minister for Infrastructure, the Foreign Ministry was there, and there were other bilateral engagements, all in pursuance of the core interests of Sierra Leone, infrastructural development, pursuance of peace, and promotion of interregional trade, free movement of people, goods, and services, original reasons for which the ECOWAS and Manor River Unions were formed. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I needed to get you up to speed on this as we await um, the other members of the delegation from the Ministry of Sports. I am open to questions. So no time wasted. Every minute spent here should be justified. This is the Ministry of Information. Forget about the fact that for some strange reason the press conference should, did not hold last week. I'm happy that that's in our history. But it's never going to happen again. Questions? Okay, in the absence of questions, thank you very much. God bless you. Ah, this would be Zelenke. Sir, how come your team is not here? We have the minister completing us while we wait for the national Oh, yeah. So, Mr. Zelenke, I think you can address. Let us show some deference for these people. You can address them. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Minister, and congratulations to you and the delegation headed by the Honorable Vice President. I think it's an important development worth noting. Mr. Minister, with your leave, the Honorable Minister of Sports is here, and we're expecting him to be here with the technical team, including members of the Sierra Football Association. We're deeply surprised that up till now they've not showed up, and even last week they were not here and we've also had bilaterals with them. Mr. Minister, with your leave and advice, we would graciously request that the Minister of Sports take the podium. As we all know, Sierra Leone and Sierra Leone participated at the AFCON in Cameroon through our darling Leon Stars. In our first match, we held the reigning champions to go less draw and former champions Ivory Coast to a 2-2 draw and later on we lost to Equatorial Guinea. I'm sure individually we've done our own diagnosis, but it's important to listen to competent voices, to inform us about key highlights, and possibly to literally peek into the future. Without further ado, let me bring on the Minister of Sports, Minister Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Minister, Deputy Minister, Director, and Vice to the Sport Minister, members of the Fourth Estate, I greet you in the name of the Almighty Allah. Salaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam. Forgive me, I'm a Muslim. Uh, first and foremost, um, may I uh, tender my apology again? Or once more for starting this event at this time of the hour. Uh, of course, this event is not only meant for the Ministry of Sport alone and the National Sport Authority, because the bulk of the explanation lies in the hands of the FA and the technical team. So that's why we keep waiting, even though they haven't shown up as yet. I think. I will start the update. Uh, again, may I say thank you very much to the Ministry of Information, Communication. Good job. Uh, I think I will advocate that for every two weeks, you give us a space so that we can come here, you know, to uh, educate our people, to really know what's happening in the area of sports, because a lot is happening. After this uh, program, I would like to engage my colleague minister with regards to the, the, the problem I'm facing as a minister in my ministry with regards to information, you know, because I need someone to be disseminating information, everything, the happenings of uh, uh, the sports ministry. For that, I know. 
I trust my brother. I know he can address that. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, we are back from Cameroon. I know I can see some faces. They are happy. Some are not happy. Then we have to put that to our backs. We are back. We make sure we come back to the drawing board. Uh, first and foremost, let me make this clarification. It's a history, but I have to make that clarification. Because um, it's so unfortunate that, you know, what happened last week, uh, it wasn't, you know, done in the best, in the best interest of journalism. I am a minister since I was appointed four years. I haven't gone for any leave. So, if I had to call my minister, tell Mr. Minister, yes, the press conference, likely I will not show because I had an appointment with my doctor at one to two. Is that right, sir? That's what I told my minister. But in the absence of me, myself, standing here, I have competent people that we, 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 we represent me accurately, succinctly. So that's what I told him. But again, what happened? After 10, 11, just after I, I, I gave you that call, the doctor called me that he had a surgery matter so that we have, you know, he had no um, option but to reverse our appointment. So I, I went there to see him about 10 30. Of course, even before 11 o'clock, I'm done with him. I came back to the office. But, you know, I was about giving him just a surprise package. I wasn't even telling you that, you know, I was going to come now. So that was the case. So we prepared ourselves. No sooner we approach the steps, coming down to board the car, I had a call from my brother, my, my, my advisor here, Ali Kada. He told me that the press conference had been called off because of electricity. But people went all over the social media. The minister is sick, he's not well. Then I started, you know, getting a lot of calls even from America. What did you do? They you know what? No, I said, I'm okay, I'm fine. People making petty, petty mockery over that issue. Please, we are all Sierra Leoneans, please. So as, as my brother has just mentioned, it's a history now, so I'm now here to give you whatever you want. And I will give you whatever you want. But make sure you don't ask me any, my, anything that has to do with finances. I'm not the accountant, please. I, will, I have to make that categorically clear. No, trust me, yeah, sure. I'm going to support my brother in this. <laughs> Can I start? Go ahead. Uh, you know, um, he is um, a typical talk and do person. Uh, you all know him by now. Uh, he's a sports minister who, in the last 25 years, has led our darling the little stars to Africa. Under him, many interesting things have happened. But without the commitment, the unrelenting commitment, wholesome support, of this government under President Julius Madabiu, sports will no longer have had this boost. We have spent the most probably after education, agriculture, fisheries. This is the next big expenditure area because the president honestly believes in giving a fair chance to Sierra Leoneans who have talents, who have potentials, and opportunity to realize their, their potential. I listened to you a couple of days ago with the commencement of the Premier League and all of this international engagement, did you say about 16 Sierra Unions are now applying their trade abroad? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So these are, contracts. these are all very important milestones we have been able to achieve because of the unrelenting commitment of this administration, because of the wholesome commitment of His Excellency the President to ensuring that sports is given a big boost in the country. So this is very important. Um, it did not just happen in the vacuum. Because for the longest time, we did not play the Premier League, which has started as a springboard for us to be able to pick out these talents who now did this very stellar representation of the country at the last half court. You know, I just needed to put that in context so we all understand. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Um, I have now the privilege to introduce President one of the Australian Football Association, Mr. Harold, please. please. And the General Secretary, Mr. Kamara, uh, coach of the National Team Leon Stadium, Kista, and the media person, okay, Mr. Lamy. Okay. 
uh, as I have just said, we are back from Cameroon, okay? As a government, uh, we have the moral responsibility to make sure we provide funds for any national team, not only football. And as, as my brother has just reiterated here, this is the only government that has spent a lot, a lot, a huge sums of money in sport. No doubt about that. Uh, Cameroon, I can say it's an experience. Big, big experience. As a government, of course, my mandate, I've just let it out. We have our responsibilities to make sure we fund each and every national team that is representing the green, white, and blue flag. With regards to the national team, Leon Stars, I think we went with the team financially, you know, adequately financed. Financially, adequately, we made sure we give the, 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 the national team, the technical team, what we think is budgeted for. What we think is budgeted for. Of course, as I've just said, it's an experience. Uh, for after 25 years, I think we must congratulate ourselves. We must congratulate ourselves. Sierra Leone, the national team, to my own perception, we perform extremely well. With regards to teams that have been preparing their teams for over 15, 20 years, the team that we took to Cameroon, of course, was in a, in a transition period. And you can see a lot and a lot of young uh, uh, a crop of players. But uh, as I've said, it's an experience. Because even though people were expecting much from the national team, but football is not like any other you know, activity that you undertake. Nobody, because of course, we had, even before the match started, we had people here on social media, we are asking, can we make it up, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, to Algeria? You think you're going to hold Algeria to ransom? Some people think Sierra Leone is going to, you know, face the worst bit, the worst bit in its life, ever in the history of uh, football in Sierra Leone. But we proved many our, of our critics wrong. You see the performance of the guys? One reason that is responsible for that, because this is a government, and we have a president that, that is so passionate about sport. And that is why, whenever we have in any international functions, be it athletics, be it judo, be it karate, believe you me, we have result. And as I speak, of course, so for some of you that we are fortunate to attend the launch of the basket fund. And that was the very day that the president read our report card for the Ministry of Sport. A, clean, a very clean pass. Because most associations, our athletes, they have bagged a lot and a lot of medals and trophies. Yes. So that tells you this government is so particular, is so passionate about sport. Back to Cameroon. Our first match, of course, it was a thrilling match. But again, I must confess that I was only able to watch the second half of the match. Reason being as a leader, I had wanted to see each and every Sri Lankan being allocated into the stadium before, as a minister, get into that stadium to watch the match. So this is what happened. Because the day we went, that was the day we had the match. In the morning, we landed, we left here after 12 o'clock. We landed um, in Morocco, I think after three or four. Security checks, or oh, four o'clock, right, oh, three, okay, that's good, thank you. So we had to go through security checks, so before we finished, uh, we completed already uh, uh, about two hours. So we left the airport about six o'clock. 
I could not, I could not rest myself and my deputy. We made sure each and every Sierra Leonean, not only those that uh, 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 we catered for for the 70, for the, uh, how do you call it, the scholarship, no. Everybody that was in Cameroon is a Sierra Leonean. So we made sure each and every one of them is being, is being, is being allocated in, in his or her own hotel. Before I came back to my own hotel, I reached my hotel at about 7 a.m. It wasn't easy. It's an experience, you know. My first time in Cameroon, or our first time in Cameroon, it's not easy. It's a lesson learned, honestly. Um, before that day, before we had the march, my executive director ran up to my hotel room, said, Mr. Minister, the players want to talk to you. I said, what's the matter? They said, if we don't give them the $5,000 match appearance, they will not play. I said, what? I said, they will not play. And mind you, the budget spares, it's very clearly that 3,000 match appearance, 1,500 draw, 4,500 winning votes. But again, you know, like a small boy, you can be a good runner, a perfect runner, but you don't know how to hide. This is what happened. So we play around the $7,500. So when the tension was so high, you know, negotiating with them, and time was against them, because they, they were to report uh, uh, at the National Stadium, 11 o'clock is it? Mr. GS, 11, was it 11? Okay, we were in that meeting up to even after 10 o'clock. So I had no alternative. I have to take the bull by the horn. I ordered my executive director to pay them the $5,000 match appearance. So this is what happened. That is why those guys were able to, 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 uh, uh, to perform against Algeria. In fact, in fact, when I met them in the dressing room, a whole cool man, a whole cool water of cool man was you no know, splash on me, you no know, in celebration. We celebrated. So this is the case. So match one, match two, match three, all of them back seven, I mean five thousand dollars for match appearance. Match draw was one thousand five hundred. So you see, this is the way, you know, as a government, you know, because I took that responsibility, I took that leadership. Because had I not you know, you know, taken up that leadership, anything that would have happened. They should have shifted that blame on the minister. And that's why I took it. I took it. And now, as I speak, I need an executive clearance because what is budgeted for, the 3000 is not what we pay them. So I had, we are now doing a letter to the president for an executive clearance for approval for audit purposes. Audit purposes. Okay. So at the second match, the, 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 um, I think against Ivory Coast. Okay, the boys were in good spirit, you know, but again, that's why we have the technical people here. They can explain, you know. But again, that match, I'm very much satisfied with the, the performance of the boys. Very much satisfied. Very much satisfied. Um, with regards to the third match, I think everybody saw what happened. The coach is here, he's a technical man, of course he can explain, but again, he can explain, but again, you see football is not the way you think, football is not the way you think, believe you me, I was hoping, you know, I was having the impression that Guinea, Guinea, Guinea was going to be an easy walkover for us. But, you know, they proved to be the most difficult in the tournament. You see? So that's, that's the, 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 the dynamics of the game. Um, yes, there are some isolated cases, you know. But, again, as I've just said, out of 25 years, that's a, 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 a Cameroon. I've never been there. GS, okay, I, know, I don't know for the GS, but my coach has never been to Cameroon, and Cameroon is one of the most expensive countries in Africa. Take it from me. Take it from me, most expensive. So we went there, thank God. No problem, no nothing. We came back safe. 
Yes, there are challenges, but we cannot have everything perfect. Hmm? Everything is not going to be perfect. And I want to say this again. In Cameroon, the government, I mean the Ministry of Sport, the NSA, the SLFA, of course, we work collaboratively. Perfect coordination. No problem at all. We had no problem of finances. Nobody can tell you that. But we have challenges. Because that's a neutral ground, a neutral country. Let me don't bore you with words because yeah, I know there are going to be so many questions. So many people are going to fire us so many questions. So uh, with that, Mr. Minister, I think I'll have to stop here so far. Question time, I will come in again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Minister, for giving us the political cover for this. And I think Sierra Leoneans at home and abroad continue to celebrate our very modest but commendable steps. As you said, after 25 years, again, Sierra Leone showed up at the African Nations Cup. I think Sierra Leoneans, much as they might be interested in having a diagnosis, I think Sierra Leoneans are more focused and they are very forward-looking. So perhaps it's time for us to get a bit technical and look now at the technical side of things. I love the way the minister was very diplomatic. He was very, 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 very happy with our first performance. He was very happy, very pleased with our match against Ivory Coast. And now when it got to the Equatorial Guinea, he said the technical man will explain. <laughs> But that is good, and that is, the, that is why we are happy that you are here, both on the political side, but also on the technical side, so that, I mean, the media will get to understand. And, and until the media fully understands all of this, it will be difficult to transmit it to our people. So at this point, Mr. Minister, you would have to decide who comes now to the podium to speak on that technical bit, or perhaps lay the foundation, and then and then we can proceed on that basis. So the technical lead for this will now wish to come, and, 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 and after that, the press, yes, the press perhaps will have to decide whether we'll bring in Pochkista to make some preliminary comments, and after that, Q&A, or we reserve him for your Q&A. But let's have the technical lead first. Vice President Alpha. Good afternoon, Mr. Minister of Sports, Minister of Information, members of the Fourth Estates, all protocols observed. I am Harold Nats Johnson. Vice President, one of the Sierra Football Association, and I'm also the Chairman of the Technical and Development Committee. And I was also the leader of the delegation for the first set of people who went to Cameroon, meaning the players, the technical team, technical support staff, administrative and other secretariat staff from the SLFA and myself. 50 of us went by and had private jets and we arrived on the 6th in Douala. We had an excellent reception at the best Western Hotel and work started earnestly the next day as we engaged the players for training session. As a football association, we also have a constitutional mandate to ensure football plays in an enabling environment with all the structures. We also have the basic responsibility to engage our teams in international competitions 
namely WAFU, West African Football Union, CAF, Confederation of African Football, and FIFA. And that was what we did before we got our qualification. We got the story qualification in Guinea after we had the problematic match here in, in Frita when Benin refused to honor the match, claiming they were falsely accused of having COVID. That one is gone. Kafa to reschedule the match to Konakri, Guinea. After we are taken to the court of arbitration, arguments were had by both federations. And a rematch was organized by CAF in Konakri. And we had that match, everybody knows we came out with a one invictus which ensured our qualification for the first time after 24, 25 years. And on August 17th, the draws were made in Yaoundé. We had a representation from the Sino Football Association, the presidents, Mos Daddy Brahma, our head coach. John Kista and the team manager, Mr. Babadi Kamara, the witness, the girls, and we are placed in the group we found ourselves. Algeria, we are the defending champions, Ivory Coast, a regular team in the AFCON. These are teams who appear every two years. For the last 12 years, they've been constant participation teams in the AFCON. Of course, we had Equatorial Guinea. Most people lost them off. Possibly, maybe the last time in 2008, we went there with a chartered flight and we defeated them 3-1 in Malabo. I think those were the memories people had, that they were pushovers. People forgot that they co-hosted the African Nations Cup with Gabon, and they went to the semi-finals. And before the Nations Cup, they recruited so many people, naturalized people, most of their players play in Spain, lower division in Spain, in Portugal, and they did a lot of naturalization. They strengthened their team. Most people, they didn't take cognizance of that. They only remembered when we defeated them years back. So for most people in Sierra Leone, Equatorial Guinea, we are eating off. Most people, also did not watch the match they played against Ivory Coast and the match they played against Algeria. We watched those matches with the coach and some of the technical staff. We, are, we evaluated them, assessed them, and we knew that was going to be the most difficult match. Back home, we had all these things on social media, the readiness, the expectation, we had calls, people were telling us, look, you guys should give these guys 4-5, 4-5, you know, and so it was a difficult one, the match was a difficult one, no excuses, we were relocated to Limbe, uh, some 75 kilometers from where we played our first two matches, Duala, in Limbe and Gua, for those who know Cameroon well, that area can be dubbed as a rebel zone. We knew what we went through in this country. We had helicopter cover to take us to the stadium for practice sessions. We had convoy of armed truck, armored cars. As I said, no excuses. That was where we played our third match. And for the purposes of technicality, game plan, match preparation. We have the head coach here, I think he will celebrate on that later. But I was with the team for every practice session. And as an association, we ensured the players arrived on time. The players were comfortably lodged in the various hotels. We are taken to by CAF. I also want to immensely thank the government of Sierra Leone through the Ministry of Sports and the National Sports Agency, the Supervising Agency, for providing adequate funds, as the minister just reiterated, adequate funds. I'm emphasizing on the word adequate funds because we had 
discussions with members of other delegations. Gambia went to the quarterfinals with only $3,000 paid. We had a meeting with the president of the Nigerian Football Association, Mr. Pinnick. Nigeria played their first match without allowances. But we have a minister who was very, very determined to see that we had no itches before our first match because we knew Algeria as defending champions. That was a team who had played 36 matches unbeaten. Only equal or Italy, Italy had 39 unbeaten. That is a team. And four days before we played them, five days before we played them, they played Ghana and they defeated them 3 0 in a friendly match. We knew they had the African best player, Marez. We knew they had all these players, and we knew it was a tall order to face them. But the composure, as the, as, the, as the minister said, the team was well prepared financially, psychologically, mentally, they were strong that we could go to the match and face them and make history. And that was exactly what the boys did. After 24 years, it was difficult to assemble a team to go to that stage. As I said, we have usual customers. Ghana, Nigeria, all these guys are usual customers. They go there every two, four years. Ghana exited the competition. Ghana are four times winners of the champions of the African uh, uh, Nations Cup. Four times winners. They exited the competition with one point. The defending champions, Algeria, exited that competition with also a point. Nigeria won all their games. They, have, they, have, they won three games, nine points, and they went to the stages of elimination. They were eliminated by Tunisia by a long goal. So this is a tournament where I believe if people are preparing the score sheet, the old stars, Ministry of Sport, and all of us should be given a 70% mark. Yes. As I said earlier, uh, Minister Jamiru requested for someone to lay the ground for what people want to hear about match preparation, game plan, technicality surrounding the game, preparedness, mental strength. We we'll love that one from our head coach. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vice President Wan, Sierra Leone Football Association, for laying the technical foundation for this presentation today. I believe Sierra Leoneans at home and abroad are very much interested in this because we're very much connected to and passionate about Sierra Leone or any other sports entity participating at the highest level. And we can only continue wishing them well. We all watch the match. Some of us were here at some point. Uh, some of us became more technical than even the technical people. <laughs> and some of us had our preferences in terms of players. I mean, I was sitting with some people who would tell, and even became the coach. Yeah. And some people would sit there and say, okay, go we'll call Minister Yelenke, go let pull that player, let put the other one. All that thing. And somebody was saying, perhaps Coach Kista had his own preferences. Sometimes get the one the way he likes, get the one the way he don't like. So it's important that we, today we have Coach Kista. And I think if anybody really was having the severest of bronze, that was Coach Kista. Because uh, they usually say, uneasy lies the what? Yeah, the head that wears the golden crown. Coach Kista was in that position. And I believe he will dispassionately speak to the issues, not just diagnosis, but also what are we looking at as a country into the future. Somebody was talking about, is it Agri Coast 2023 or something? I think Sierra want to be forward looking. It's my pleasure to bring on Coach Kista. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon, um, Mr. Ministers, SLFA, 
NSA members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Um, again, I just want to go back into when I came into the job. When I came into the job, I was given a three-year contract, which was about qualification. And for us, it was about transition and qualifications 2023. That was my target. We had a series of friendly matches where we started our players' identification, which took us into Mauritania, Niger, and then obviously preparation going into the two Nigeria games back to back, where I was the head coach. Prior to me taking over, we had a point from two games. Obviously at that time, I think going into Nigeria back to back, I think we knew we had a very, very difficult task to try and get results away in Nigeria and Nigeria and Freetown, which probably would have would have ended up ended up our our qualification into this just concluded after. But then again, what we tried to do as a as a technical team was try and identify a, a lot more younger group of players that we could bring into the Syrian national team and the experienced players. And we had to really try and transition that. I think when I came into the job, I measured transition. And a lot of people were thinking about what transition was about. And I think now everyone is understanding what I mean about transition, you know, with regards to the players. And we managed to get better results against Nigeria, which got, back, got us back into the, the fold around qualification. We had a match away to, to Lesotho, very difficult match at the time as well, and got a result there. And then we came back into Freetown against Benin, another very difficult match. <coughs> but prior to us coming against Benin, we had a situation between Benin and Nigeria, Nigeria playing away to Benin, which again, at the last minute, last nick of time, result went away. You know, Nigeria won. And then we came into the final match against Benin in Conakry, which eventually got us qualification through a penalty again, which was caught by Kai. Again, we came back home, and then we looked at preparations going into AFCON. Um, a lot of friendly matches. We went into Morocco. We had three competitive matches that that's the first time it's ever happened. Took a group of players there, and we had a good 10 or 12 days around those friendly matches, which gave us an idea again around players' identification. Again, we had another one in, in Turkey, again, which we took a group of players again, which eventually gave us an idea of all the players that we wanted to look at. Before we made a final decision around the 40 in terms of regulations, that should be registered for the CAF tournament before we made a final decision around the 28th. The 20th, the 40 players we looked at as a technical staff, we looked around position-wise. So we, we went around every single position and we looked at the best three players around those positions and we identified that. And then we look at eventually players that can multitask in the team in terms of different positions and we came to our conclusion of 40 players. Again, all 40 players, we made a decision to come into Freetown around preparations. I know a lot of people felt other countries went into Doha, some went into Dubai. But Freetown for us, we thought was, was better because we wanted to come to the, to, to, the, to the people of Freetown, bring the group here, work here, and then live together. And I think for us, that worked for us, you know, in regards to the result that we got when we went into AFCON. Again, going to the final 28, 
we sat down as a technical team, as a group, and we identified the final 20 players that we took into AFCON. So sometimes people say, oh, no, 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 no. We, we did that as a group. We all sat down. We looked at what we felt we needed position-wise again, and we made a decision around the 28th. And then we went into AFCON. We left here on the 6th, arrived in Cameroon, and then we started preparation for our first match against Algeria. Again, we've gone into our first match. We've looked at a lot of stuff around Algeria. You know, don't forget, we're playing our first match in a very, very difficult group. For us, when the draw was made, and we was in that group, the most difficult match for us at that time was Equatorial Guinea. We wasn't thinking about Algeria, we weren't thinking about Ivory Coast. We were very, very, very uncomfortable around Equatorial Guinea. They're a team that come away, that come a long way in the last five or six years, with some very, very good technical players. So that was very difficult. Prior to that, they had a very good result against Tunisia, where they, they won 2 0. So that was probably our focus more than the two other matches. We went into Cameroon. We looked at Algeria, 34 games on beating. That's probably been together three years already with a group of players that are very experienced, very talented group. And again, our approach as Sierra Leone with what we have, we wanted to go and have a good start against Algeria. Again, I'm sure if we're being honest, when we were put in that group, no one gave us a chance. But we, we had belief with the group of players that we went with that we were capable of of creating situations representing Sierra Leone in a very positive way. And I'm sure we did that when we thought about how we approach Algeria. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that are questioning sometimes how we play, how we go about, what we go about. Sometimes you've got to be very careful around approaches. We've got to be respectful on the way against Algeria. And we approach that in a very positive way around our own strategies in regards to what we have in terms of the players. And it worked. I thought we, in the first half, yes, we had opportunities, but we limited them to, 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 to very, very few opportunities, which was part of our game plan. We didn't want to start very badly in the competition, to be honest. We could have gone either way. We could have gone out there and be very arrogant as a team, open up, and we get beat four or five nil, and that would have been the end of the, the tournament for us. But we went there, very strategic, you know, very clever about our approach, and I thought we, we did very well. Come out with a, with, a, with a very, very respectable draw, which I think, or I thought, lifted the spirit in Sierra Leone in terms of expectations. And then ever since we come into the second match. Again, we looked at the first match. You know, we've done pretty well. You know, handled the situation very well. Dealt with what, what came to us from Algeria very, very well in terms of our defending, in terms of our going forward. And then we went into Ivory Coast with the same approach. Again, not a lot to change from that because the group that went out against Algeria done very, very well. I don't think there was any reason to change that. We didn't think there was any reason to change that. We started with Ivory Coast, different match. Don't forget we've played Algeria. So now Ivory Coast has a very good idea, idea around the old stars. So again, another difficult match for us. So their preparations will be around us against Algeria, what you've seen, what they feel was, we're good at, what we wasn't good at, what they could exploit, where they were going to capitalize or where they are going to take advantage. And we had to work the same way as well as a technical team. Okay, we started off the match. Yes, you know, not very well, considering the penalty in the 17th minute, which they missed, kept us back in the match. Obviously, we had our own chances as well. Probably if we took that, it was a different game altogether, but not to be. And then we went on. We considered the goal, again, going into the break. But then we went into the into half-time, one nil down, and we reorganized again. You know, we had to change strategies and look at what could get us a result. Yeah, I think coming out in the second half, we put more pressure on them, and then we got the equalizer. But then again, what happens? Going forward, I thought we were very open around the second half in the last 20 or 30 minutes against Ivory Coast. 
I think we were very, very lucky not to have considered about three or four goals, just because we're very open. Same, not compared to what we was like very, very, very close against Algeria. So we've become very, a little bit open. I know there are a few people that are saying, oh, you could change, change, change. Hey, sometimes you make changes and it doesn't work out. What happens? But sometimes we've got to be patient. Sometimes, yes, we've got to give the opposition respect in as much as they're carving areas around us to play and try and get a goal, which eventually happened. They got another goal. But then what happened? We kept, we kept plugging away, we kept plugging away, we kept believing. And then we, we had a break again. You know, we, we had a few changes, you know, because again, we were gambling. We had to gamble, we had to bring a bit of pace in, we had to bring a bit of fresh legs in, and we gambled on that. And then we had to gamble on Steven going forward as well to try and get something out of the match. And eventually we did, you know, we got a, we got a draw. But not very pleased with the performance, again in the first half or in patches, because I just felt we wasn't very compact in our defending when we when we had to defend as a, as a unit. Again, sometimes people say, oh, we're very defensive as, a, as a, the way we play. To be honest, I don't think as a coach we go out and set the players out to go and be defensive. I think we, we, we look at our strengths, we look at the opposition, their strength, we look at where we can, we, can, we can affect, they look at where we can affect, but we try and play around how we can manage around when we haven't got the ball. And if we're, if we're to go as much as we have done in the last 10 or how many games, we haven't lost that many, it's probably because we've worked around our organisation. The attacking side of it will come, but you have to have a base to work from, and hopefully we've got a good base. Taking us into the final match, I think that was a very, very difficult match for us. Again, there was a lot of talk about history. You know, I could try again in Sierra Leone, we've got the better results against them. I think that goes out of the way. I think if we look at them in the 10 years, they're 10 years, 11, 12 years ahead of us. And that's a, that's a fact, you know. These are things we've got to look at. We cannot just look at the national team in terms of going into AFCON and getting result. I think we have to look at Sierra Leone football holistically and look at how we're going to get to the levels that we need to be to be competing against the better teams in Africa. Yes, we have a benchmark to work from, important. It took us into the Equatorial Guinea game. We sat down, we looked at the analysis against the previous matches, especially when they played against Ivory Coast. I watched that, I was at the stadium, myself and Amidou, we looked at that. And then they went on and got results against Algeria, which made it very, very difficult for us now. So we're going into the final match needing to win. And they're going into the final match for a draw. So it becomes very, very difficult for us. Now, our approach around that match was we had to keep things very, very tight. We didn't have to go and open up and then we concede one goal. And that would be the end of it as well because then we have a mountain to climb. So our approach was let's keep it as tight as we can. Hopefully, with what we have, going towards the end of the game, we'll get something. Because they had nothing, they had three points already, we had two. So it was difficult. And then we had a pending match as well between, obviously the other going match against Ivory Coast and, and Algeria as well. So now we have to be sure that we have to go and get a result. So that made it very, very difficult. But again, we had to look at our match against Ivory Coast, wherein we were very, very open. We were very open around our midfield. Again, when we see on the outside, when people look at the midfield, oh, the midfield is open, we've got to think about, there is a midfield quartet. We have the two wingers, we have the two central midfield players. When it comes to trying to defend as a unit, in terms of organisation, these two central, these two wide midfield players have to come in as well. But I think we found ourselves in a situation where they didn't come in that much at all against Ivory Coast. And that's why the Ivory Coast played through was so easy. And now we consider the goals, or the goal. So this is something we looked at. And we looked at Equatorial Guinea. You know, they're very good at that. So what we wanted to do was see if we can, if we can solidify our midfield a little bit in front of our back four. Don't forget, you know, we, we need to do something to stop that. Because again, if we can get them to affect the wings, it's better off than affect the middle for us, then we have a chance as well. But then again, you know, we have... We want players to go forward, but then we need these players to come back and defend when we need to. But we got caught up, 
you know, from a from a from a set piece, which we didn't defend properly, and then we scored from that. Again, we we tried, again we kept it down, we kept the score down, which was very important into the break. And then we made some changes. Kwame Kui, we played in midfield because again, you know, everybody keeps mentioning our midfield. We know we have problems with, with the midfield, we know that. But we're still trying to find a combination at this moment in time in regards to what we have. What is available. You know, we want the best midfield players to come and play for us and create for us. At this moment in time, we don't have that in Syria. We don't. We will have that eventually when we do a lot of development around that position. Okay? So Kwame Kui, we drafted into the central midfield so that we can have another player on the, way, on the right. But then going into the final game, we wanted to affect him. So what we did was we brought Abu Diabirin, who we felt has done very, very well. If you look at the previous qualifying games when we had, it was him and John Kamara that played, and they done very, very well. And then when we went into Morocco in the friendly matches, he did very well there as well. You know, when we, when we, when we played Morocco, he did very well in the 4-3-3 as well. So when you look at trying to, to peer players, you have to look at combinations in terms of work. It's about our combination. So we looked at that. We thought, let's bring him in there and see if we can just give us cover in the back four so that we don't have the same situation we had around um, Ivory Coast. So it didn't quite work out. Again, you know, we, we, lo we lose some, we win some. So we had to bring Kwame back in again to help us out. And I thought in the second half, you know, we, we put a bit more pressure on them. We did. We made a few changes. We gambling again. We went into a three centre back situation where we pushed a lot of bodies in because we had to get something. And then we eventually got a, a penalty. But then again, you know, it's, it's part and parcel of football. You know, um, we, didn't, we didn't score. But for me, and for us as a group, is the fact that we've gone into Cameroon and given Sri Leoneans something that we felt will take us into the future in terms of our development. And that's the way we look at it. You know, 25 years away is a very, very long time. You know, we've gone into AFCON playing against countries that have been there regularly in the last 25 years, competing. Compared to us, that's gone in after 25 years. So I, can't, I don't think we can be too, too greedy or too despondent around our showing in Cameroon. I think we have to look to the future. You know, we have a very bright future. I think we have to, stop being, we have to start being very positive around what we have. Don't look at just the football side of it. Look at it holistically and look at what we have in terms of the players that we have. You know, a lot of people are looking and sitting and thinking, well, we've brought Stephen Cocker in. Done very well for us. What if Stephen hasn't consented to come and play for Sierra Leone? We brought Isaac Alon in again. What if he hasn't consented? We've got the English boys that are coming in. What if all of these boys hasn't consented to play for Sierra Leone? What would we have had? That's the question we're going to ask ourselves when we're trying to evaluate what we've done in going into AFCON. If we can do that, I think then we, we can look at it and say, okay, yes, we need somewhere to start. We need to regroup. We need to identify. We need to develop. And then we can go forward. Again, the teams that have done better in the nation's call, the basis of those teams is come from the home base national side. That's the basis of it. The players that we're bringing to come in have only come in for a month, two months. And we don't have them for that long period of time. So we're taking time to integrate them into how we do things. So it's going to, be take, it's going to take time. And I think football is a, is a process that we need to, to understand that it takes time. If we have a group of home based players, I go back to the, to the previous national team that did very, very well. With the Tetes, the Poboskis. Those guys have all come from the same background here. The Papa Jacks, the FC Calongs, they've done very, very well. That's why we had a very good national team. At this moment in time, we're trying to develop one. We're trying to develop one. And hopefully we'll get, we'll get it right. But it takes time. And we need to be patient. We need to be patient. You know, we were the, we were, we were the better players. As coaches, it makes it very easier for us. If we have better players and better players, we just sit down. And they can go and just give us results. But what we have is what we're, what we're working with. And we have to be patient. We have to be patient. Yes, you can't ask me to go and play like Barcelona when I haven't got the basis right here. We can do that, but if we've got the basis right to do that, then we're going to do that. We're going to have the players to do that. We've got to be patient around 
how we want to see the national team progress. We have to be patient. You see Algeria have won 34 games without losing? That's because they've been together for a long time. So they can change whenever they want because they know, everyone knows each other in terms of how long they've been together. For us, it's a learning curve. We're bringing players in. The friendly match is helping us. But we have to be patient. We have to be patient. Football is a process. Liverpool, it took him five years to, when the new manager came in, to win his first Premier League. It's time. But from where we are, we've come from to where we are now, I think we've come a very long way in a very short space of time. And that's why I think, you know, the desperation and the, and the expectations went very, very high. On that note, again, hopefully you can understand, you know, where we've come from and how far we've come from. And let's take the positives from that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Coach Pista. Um, so, two important things, and I'm sure Coach Pista has touched on one. Um, I think a study was done recently in the, in the education sector where they discovered that children who don't have the opportunity to go through nursery school education would most likely not have the proper foundation to, um, um, to grow um, into the system and ultimately become what they want in terms of career path. I think by parity of reasoning, if we don't invest also in football academies in Sierra Leone, I think there's an important piece we are missing on. But perhaps that could come in the, quest in the form of questions and the Minister of the Technical People will react to that. And secondly, in terms of our sporting infrastructure, I know Minister Nyerenke is very passionate about it, we spoke about it the last time. He wants to see how we could have the, you know, the uh, emerging trends in the football turf, just so that our pitches all over the country are very standard, at least a selected number of them. Because you don't want to have somebody showing up at the bigger picture internationally, and you have not been used to that kind of tough playing locally. So if you don't use for the play KT field, then you go to a very advanced pitch, uh, something happens. So I think that's also an area we are looking at in terms of investment. But I would say this, God has been very gracious to the own stars. The way the second goal came against La Côte d'Ivoire, it can only be God. The way that that guy scored that ball, first falling to the ground, and then moving like a lion up to the time that he kicked, and the way he undressed and he presented himself, that could only be the stature of a lion. And I think God was telling us if we continue to trust in him more, great and mighty things he will continue to do for Sierra Leone. But now it's time to um, give you, um, our friends in the media, the opportunity to ask the right questions, to probe, and to get words from our people. And for that component of this program, let me bring on Joe Sisse to coordinate it. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. Um, ladies and gentlemen, for the stage, we had it all from the people who went to Cameroon. So it's now time for you to ask your questions. Please, at least two questions, no preambles. Uh, announce your name and media institution, and then you ask your question. On the issues, please. Thank um, you very much, Jerry And uh, to the coach, you, you did mention about us not having creative midfield. But well, there was a time when the um, Sierra Leone Football Association wanted to naturalize a player by the name of Samuel. Why and, um, was this naturalization was not accepted by the technical team? Okay, next question. I am Adi Remy and I work for Freedom Radio. My question is to the young guys from SLFA. I want to say thanks to John Kista for giving us the technical explanation, but we also want to get the financial explanation from you guys, because we understand that money we are giving, money was given to you guys. Now, do the minister try to explain? Even though he asked us, we should not. I mean, uh, um, asking questions that has to do with finances. But thank God that um, Chris Kamara is here and others. Um, can you give us at least a breakdown on how? He used the money that was given to you. One, in terms of 
flight arrangement to um, in terms of uh, uh, jersey of uh, 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 preparation and other things. Can you please give us a big down how you guys use the money? Okay. Um, uh, uh, please, one more question. Um, Mr. Minister, um, we, we went to the uh, we went to Cameroon. We are out from Cameroon. A um, few months from now, I think March, uh, CAF will do the draw for the next uh, 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 qualifying series or uh, uh, preparation for the next African Cup of Nations in 2023. My question is um, for the uh, head coach and the SLF and the minister, what is the way forward in terms of, I mean, qualifying for the next Africa Cup of Nations from 2023? Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, give me my question. I'm a member of the Washington Paper and to Mr. Kista. Um, Mr. Kista, how do you take responsibility to apologize or resign? as head coach of New Stairs, uh, because you were in the state of independence to choose the, the players, uh, or were you influenced by other factions that might have motivated the loss of the matches as well? Uh, so is, the minister sir, um, if we keep on pouring money up to the last moment to the New Stairs players, where do we stand in terms of nationalist, our nationalistic values? Thank you. Okay, one more question. Um, we will have a question and then we'll take another one. Yes. Okay, um, good afternoon. Fatima Takuma, I'm afraid I'm with you. Um, the first question goes to the head coach. John Kista, um, you made mention of number six player and uh, we've seen all through the qualified series, you've never converted a player like Kwame Queen. We all know that Kwame plays on um, the seven wing, and we all know that Kwame normally delivers in that particular wing. Why did you decide to combat Kwame in the tournaments, in all the three games? And also you made mention of Amidia B. And we have Okocha in the bench. Why leaving Okocha and decided to bring him Amidia B? Thank you very much. Okay, so now we'll take responses and then we uh, yes, Mr. Minister, and your team, sir. You can respond to the question. I think I will take the first chance from the former session. My name is Chris Moore, I'm a secretary. Sir, the question on finances, you heard from the minister. The government approved funding for AFCON was given to the National Sport Authority and in collaboration with the Ministry of Sport and the SLA. But the sole disbursement of the fund was done by the agency the money was given to the NSA. Thank you. And with regards to, there was another question with regards to the qualifiers. <coughs> I've already done the preliminary draws. The preliminary qualifier starts in March. We are not part of it. So we wait after the preliminaries, then we can have the qualifier proper, that is the 4 4 team stuff in the group A, that is the group stage. Till that is done at the moment, we don't know our opponents yet. But again, as a football association, we started it and we continue to have international friendlies to ensure we capacitate our national team. And also, we have the home league going, we can be able to see, get players that can represent Sierra Leone. Thank you. I think you have already answered uh, the two questions with regards to the monies. Uh, um, ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to exercise patience. We are in the reconciliation and now process. Just after we finish, we let the public know how the funds we are used, okay? So I think that is it. Uh, with regards to ask, tell, asking about nationalistic values, I will, I don't know, it's, it's a broad term, you know? I don't know how you, you will relate that, but I think that has to go, um, that question is for, I think, for the players. And those, I, don't, I think that question is going for the players. It's like you're saying players don't want to be nationalistic. They want to put money first before they give it. That's what you're saying? Yes. Then that question is not for me, it's for them. But again, back online, I think you, you're quite correct. I think we, we must, as a nation, of course, the coach is here, the GS is here. We're going to make sure we put... Um, stringent, robust rules and regulations 
for the next Afro qualifier. If you, if you, if you think you can abide to those rules and regulations to play for, for, I mean, to play for Sierra Leone, then you will be part of the team. But if you don't, because they have to sign, you're quite correct. This is what I told the, the FA president, but they are on it. The GS is on it. You see, we are never too late and you know never. But we are going to work on it. Of course, you know, you have to show nationalistic, you know. Your nationalistic values before ever. Deliver, you play, don't put money first. This is a problem. This is a problem, you see. But we are working on it, okay? So I think that's it. Yes. Hello. 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 Like all the nations of the world, we are in team with the Republic of the International Hospital. Because it's normally the guy who is driving for just the nation or or global. Were you influenced to make your selection because you are in the center of the best to do that? Oh, okay. Um. I was never influenced by anybody to make nations. Um, when I came into the job, I signed a contract to qualify for AFCON. That's my objective, and that was my terms of reference. So I think I achieved that already. I'm the best, 11 best players on the beach. Okay? So sometimes that's why you go be patient. We have to be patient. There are certain ways we approach, certain players we play. There are certain players, certain ways we approach against certain teams, certain players will not play because of our approach. Okay? Okay, so we take another round of questions, please. Yes. Just two questions, please. No preambles. Mohamed Khan is the name, and I ask for sanitary Mr. Stefan. Coach Kista, you had um, two changes after the first match. What was your thinking in doing those changes? Uh, also, um, can somebody explain here um, the charges that we use, um, the numbers we are given out, why is it there we are on the pitch? Can somebody take responsibility for this? Okay. Yeah, um, I am Kumar Vedada Kumar from Galaxy Radio. Um, I just want to actually ask a question here on, from the speech of uh, Mr. Minister. You said the budgets you need for the players was not actually what I'm Mohamed Sobi for Epic Radio Fosto, the Minister of Sport. Looking at qualifying for the next AFCON in the Ivory Coast 2023, the Shaka Stadium will be under renovation for two years. Do you think in qualifying there will be more emphasis laid in the home league looking at to have not in facility for Premier League clubs? Do you think this will be another crisis for the next 25 years in qualifying? So head coach of the national team, coach on Kista, in some of the subsequent internet um, in the game, in the, in the game you have problems with um, the midfield. Well, looking at the provision list and up to the final list of players you choose to present for succession in the midfield, we have about 10 midfielders, uh, 8 midfielders you went to it. Central midfield. Central midfield. Midfielders, whether it's central or front players, they're all midfielders. Central midfield. Central midfield. You went with those amount of players, and you say you have problems with midfield, and you use you, you use players that you the play, and they have nothing to contribute. We are you afraid to take him out of the field when you think when you saw him flopping on the team at that time, or we are you actually influenced in choosing those eight players, and or we are you afraid? Or you should use it again. And secondly, do you think you can take the answer to the next Nations Cup? Are you qualified enough or competent enough to take us to the next Nations Cup? We'll take two final questions. Two final questions. Yes. General Kamala from Political Newspaper. The first. Um, I do have two questions. One is for the head of the delegation, and the other is for Coach John Kister. Um, to the head of delegation. My very first question is this. Um, as pronounced earlier by, by you, you told us that you catered for 70 supporters to go to Cameroon. Um, yes. Sorry. Wait, 
He's head of delegation. He took people to Cameroon, so he should answer that question. Yes. That was what he told us. You are head of delegation. She to get out of here. So, ask me a question, please. Just ask, ask me a question. Okay. How many people did you cater for? How many supporters did you cater for? And how much did each receive? And how many of them are safely arrived in Cameroon? And to Mr. Kista, um, I'm still lost. Um, I do have record that was have as a receipt. Why was Kai Kavara living with his family in the same hotel with the team? And there was one particular picture that he trained. Kai Kamara's kids were up on board the bus when they left Shibu for the match that day. Okay. Are you done? So now I'll give the bonus to not my brother here. Yeah, is that my bonus for what you now? Okay. That's the final question. <laughs> okay, I'm Bobodan Kamara, I write for New Citizen newspaper. Um, I want to address the Minister of Sports and the Secretary. What I'm saying is, we are keen to know, excuse me sir, we are keen to know what was actually spent in Cameroon. So you guys come in here omitting the people from NSA to come and tell us about the technicality of this. This, this, this will come later. What we are keen to know here is, what we spent, hmm? how many people left, and what was involved. That is what we want to know now. And for um, the head coach of the Lyon Star team, um, Diaby was totally lost in the first half of the match, right? And we had uh, quality players on the bench. He should have substituted him earlier on. I think that should have been of great impact to the team. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Okay, so now the team will respond. Mr. Minister. Yeah. Okay. Uh, about um, about the budget, uh, my brother over the air was asking about um, if really what I gave to the players is, is what was the budgeted. Yes. I did say, in fact, I explained that in a very simple term, that $7,500 is meant for match appearance and bonuses. So we play around it. So it's not an extra money that we took to pay them. Hmm? We play around the $7,500. So I hope you get that. With regards to my brother, okay, yes, of course, the stadium. We having uh, a breakdown uh, ceremony on the 25th of February uh, for the refurbishment of the National Stadium, and I think it's going to be a two years project. Uh, with regards to the Premier League, okay, I think the National Stadium is not only the stadium that uh, 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 Premier Leagues do use in Sierra Leone when once we have those competitions. Um, of course. Is the main is the is the main stadium that uh, uh, most uh, uh, clubs use. But what what we've done here, of course, I had a meeting with the Premier League board chairman three days, uh, about three days back here. It was on Monday. Yeah, sure. We had a meeting and um, they were suggesting that uh, they will come back to me because I think we are going to use uh, another alternative uh, because we have other nice uh, 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 football pitches in the provinces. For a, for a Premier League game. Yeah, for a Premier League Yeah, sure. We, we have Kenema, we have Bo, we have Makini, we have... Um, um, Kono. Kono. No, well, that's why I'm waiting on them. Maybe we have another week. We, they will break. Are you listening? Good. That's why I'm waiting on them. We are meeting on Monday. Yeah, they are they, they because I asked them to go back and come. Maybe they are suggesting that if we if we could, in collaboration with the SLFE, uh, uh, brandish like um, parade and tentatively um, approve school with artificial turf, that would be better. That's the alternative we're going to use for now. But I'm waiting for them anyway. 
when they come in, we let the public know. Yeah? But again, we have good pitches, of course. Kenema has the best pitch in the, you know, in Sarah Lim for now. So we can take those games there yeah, for the time being because it's a second leg. Mind you, Sarah Lim and Frita is not on the Sarah Lim. So we need to move people to go to the provinces so that, you know, yeah, so people can get more business, hotels can get more money, you know, drivers can get more money, you know, business people can make more money. So that's, you know, that, that's how we're going to work it out. Okay? Uh, with regards to challenges, challenges, you see, you can face anything like the first, the first day that we had our uh, first match. We had challenges with tickets, but that's not the, the blame. I, I will not shift that blame to anybody. That blame has to be shifted to CAF because they, 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 they were so, I mean, to enter the stadium. I saw over 300 Algerians stranded outside. They don't have tickets, you see? So you can even have your money, but to get something, really that you want is a problem because Cameroon is one of the most expensive country for now i tell you for free ask my brothers you know they will tell you uh money spent i have told you my brother i'm not a magician to tell you how much we have spent how much left no that's why i've asked you to wait for the reconciliation it is an ongoing the contract of the sixth round of 16. seven million dollars what even what we budgeted for for the whole tournament is not even up to four million dollars I don't really understand, you know? So just wait, be patient. Hmm? The reconciliation is on. We are going to make sure each and every Sierra Leonean knows what we spend and what, is, what, what, what we have in, 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 in the balance that, that, that we have in stock. Everything so far that is left is going to be uh, uh, retired to the consolidated fund. The rest assured. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Hello. Um, <clears throat> sorry, firstly, Mr. Kone, you you just asked a question about why did I make the two changes against Ivory Coast? Because we were chasing them, we were losing. So we had to we had to change something. Very different from the first match where we were doing well. So we didn't need to make any changes in that way. Um, the other one is about whether we were scared against Equatorial Guinea in playing two central midfield players. You know, I think most football teams in the world play with two central midfield players. Does that mean you're scared? So, no, we're not scared. Okay, that's it. All right. Um, Toby, you've just come back to Abubakar Samura. From my submission, what I said to you was players were selected positional wise, yes? Did I mention that? Abu Bakar Samura is a centre back, correct? We've took four centre backs in Steven Kuka, Omar Bangura, and Yamit Dunia, and David Sisei. So that was positional decision. Okay? Um, Kwame Kui, we're going back to Kwame Kui. Kwame Kui is a central midfield player. I have about five. Central midfield players, central midfield players. I think one thing you need to understand about our football and our central midfield players is you know, they're all the same, they're all like for like. Very difficult to, to, to identify attacking central midfield players. Why? If you look at the, 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 our national team and you look at the local league, tell me how many goals are scored from central midfield by central midfield players. They're all like for like. So you have to look at what partnerships work and try and see how we can improve on that. And that's what we try to do. Okay? So if you're talking about attacking central midfield players, I want you to look at how many we have in Sierra Leone or out of Sierra Leone attacking central midfield players. When you talk about internal, tell me how many goals are scored from our central midfield players. Now, let me go back to being technical. When we talk about our midfield is open, one of the reasons for that is because our central midfield players don't go from here to there in terms of support and in terms of service. Again, we need to develop that. And that's why we brought Kwame into that. Okay, you might think Kwame never had the best of games, but Kwame is probably better at going forward and attacking than we have in regards to the other central midfield players. So we're trying to look at what's going to work in terms of affecting matches. Okay? So we're not doing that. If you look at Algeria, 
They've got attacking central midfield players that can play anywhere. We don't have that. I can count one, two, three, four, five, six or seven central midfield players in Sierra Leone that are the same. Okay? So that's another area we have to look at when it comes to development. We have to look at attacking and attacking and see how many goals we score from midfield. Again, when we talk about a group, we are dependent on centre forward strikers for scoring. Everyone has to score on the pitch. Everyone has to score. Centre backs has to score from, from set pieces. Everyone has to score. But if we're looking at just centre forward scoring and we don't score, then we have a problem. Central midfield players do score. If you go back to Europe, look at the central midfield players. How many goals are chipping? In the Premier League, Serie A Premier League, how many goals do we score from central midfield? How many goals do our centre backs score? So these again are all things. That's why I say we've got to be patient. These are all things we have to look at in terms of our development, improve from clubs, and then we take it into the national team. Okay. Um, in terms of my competence, I think I, my objective for my job was to go and qualify. So I think I qualify. <laughs> Sorry. Well, result. What the, what the feedback the, the, the results will happen from the African Chess So that's why we have to say just, just get scored. No, no, but I'm saying it's not about competence, it's about result. Football is about result business. So if I, if, I, if I was asked to qualify and I've qualified, you know, again. Sorry? For what qualified you? Yeah, what qualified you? For just qualified you? Okay, you have that by now. So let's talk and um, let's be very realistic and reasonable. Um, yes, excuse me, um, gentlemen. The Abbey, I think we, we, again, I mentioned when I, when I started that we're looking at combinations, okay? And then we took him off when we felt we needed to go forward a little bit more. And we brought Kwame back in there and we put Guerrero. So, again, you know, football, the way you look at football and the way football is sometimes, is too complicated in terms of when you're watching it. Yes, you can say, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Well, yes, we look at the opposition, we look at, we analyze, and we make decisions based on what we think is going to work for us in terms of gaining advantage. And that's how we work around team dynamics. Okay? And the gentleman about Kai, I think Kai and his family, that's administrative, but I don't think at any point Kai had his kids on the bus going to a match. I don't think at any point he did. At some point, yes, after the match, when we won, the kids were on the bus. I think you can allow that, the kids. But going to the match, there was never kids on the bus. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, Any think, more? Yes, I think from, yeah. from, uh, from the Football Association, um, there was somebody that did ask a question that has to do with jerseys. The Football Association takes full responsibility and we do apologize. But you can realize that it's just one the many jazz that us the one of the goalkeeper. We don't give excuses, we plant our lessons, it's express. Two of them. Two of them. Two of them. Two of them. Can be right. Can be right. Thank you very much. That's the reason why I said we've, we've watched what is that what has happened with it. It's express. It wasn't done by the Federation. We we it's it press it it's press was done. Our jersey was ranked seven out of the twenty-four jerseys that played the African Cup of Nations and we are using Umbro. If you need a copy of the Umbro, I can give you and you know it's top standard. It costs us $54. It's top, that's what I'm putting on. So you know it's not substandard. Then let's, let's, um, let, me, let me move forward. The, next, the other thing again I want to mention is, um, somebody spoke about the minister. You have this, thank you very much. Somebody mentioned about um, appearance fee. If you know the rules and regulations of the African Cup of Nations, CAF does not give appearance fee to any team to participate in the African Cup of Nations. What they do, they have star prizes for the first, the second, and the third place. What they do, it's clear, it's on the CAF website, you can access it to all members of the, the media, it is there. No member association was given a dime by the Confederation of African Football. Other than CAF did take care of 23 players and 17 officials, full stop. With accommodation and feeling whilst in Cameroon, two days after you are eliminated, it ends. All other members of your delegation is being taken care of by the member association. 
and I have some members of the press that, that traveled. You heard from the minister, you heard from the leader of delegation. Our initial delegation that went, and the, the, the leader of delegation took, was 50. Out of the 50, the remaining, when you separate 17 single beds, and then you have 20, sorry, 14 twin beds. For players, you put them two to a room. 14 plus 17, that's what CAF provided us. The remaining members of the delegation were taken care of by the government of Sierra Leone, including the other batch of people that traveled, inclusive of the FA, the Ministry of Sports, NSA, and then the supporters. And there is um, another that spoke about players, other players playing for Sierra Leone. We don't single out any player to play. The Football Association is doing an extensive research. It's the federation that brought in these players and then they over to the technical team, including Samuel Beku. It's now available to play for Sierra Leone and can be utilized at any given point in time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kajia. Now I'm going to to you. I'm going to minister. Thank you very, very much. And honestly, when the Leo Stars um, was there, I am just a bit surprised nobody mentioned Musato. Nobody mentioned Fabianski. Nobody mentioned Kamara who scored the second goal at this time because my brothers and sisters in the media. For all of those players who did a phenomenal job, some of them I could imagine when Musato was called. I think he cried at some point. For, for, for that phenomenal performance, can we just take a minute to give the youngsters a round of applause and see our <laughs> I think it's important. We cannot mention names just so that we don't run the risk of demeaning others. So I think that we do. The first is to thank them and also thank the technical team, the head of delegation, the coach, um, the president and the secretary general of SLAFA and Minister Nyelenke um, for this that you have done and I'm sure posterity will judge. The one thing that is clear as well is the unwavering commitment of His Excellency the President, not just to football, but to sports. We believe this is quite unprecedented, and we believe His Excellency and the government of Sierra Leone will continue to do the necessary investment, will continue to give the boys a tap, and will broaden this investment and support to other facets of sports in Sierra Leone. So on that note, I wish to thank all of us for coming. I'm sure this conversation will continue thereafter. Some could be bilateral, some could be by other means. And I'm sure the doors of the ministry and SLFA and NSA will continue to open as well. And so we thank all of those important parties to this NSA, SLFA, Ministry of Sport, and other stakeholders and others who travel. Thank you very much, our friends in the media, for showing up that we now have a better session.